Well, good evening. Yeah, this is uh, part two of um, the HP uh, uh, auction score, um, and uh, we're going to go through uh, the next set of gear. Uh, there's going to be another part two. It was a big score. Um, on the, the left over here, we have actually the uh, a couple of the non-HP pieces of kit that I got, which was the uh, these Honeywell chart recorders, um, and it looks like they've. Uh, been left laying down so I don't even know if they'll actually work. Um, on the bottom here we have a uh, well over on the right here we have two HP plotters. We have a 7090A measurement system and a 7475 I think it is or 7574A uh, plotter. And then uh, if we look up on the top there was still a bunch of uh, gear uh, and, and supplies and so on that uh, came with this thing. So Let's uh, get in there and take a look at uh, each of these items. So we have the first item. This is a Honeywell chart recorder. Now, I've seen these units, but I don't actually know uh, anything at all about them. So I have no idea how they're uh, actually meant to, to work or, uh, well, basically what happens is you have the two pens here and then the chart slowly spins around and then you can record data and you can see from the the spill that they've taken these out of service and then just laid them down uh, you know, I suppose we can there we go and you know so I'm suspecting that these little uh, pens here you know are probably all used up uh, you know, we're very close, but you know, basically, at this thing will spin around, you know, and you can see that at some point, if we come in and if, let me try and zoom in a bit there, you know, you can see at some point it was uh, tracking something, and here we can see the the part numbers and everything, and my other camera is just turning off again. Um, you know, so it's a chart, you know, purple, red, uh, you know, a 1571T. And so I assume at some point, you know, you can just undo, I guess, this and just pull this circle out. Uh, and then they had uh, some additional chart paper. Let's go take a quick look at uh, this so I wasn't particularly interested in this but you know here we can see some chart paper and it's going for a full week and then it's 0 to 100 percent so if we take a look you'll see around the sides Friday Saturday Sunday Monday and then these little uh, gradations here from 0 to uh, 100% I'm guessing so whatever you're putting into it whatever range you know it's just going to measure and then slowly as it turns around the the pen will go through and so I've got uh, probably a lifetime supply of this stuff here um, that was this guy this is these recording charts by the recording charts division of graphics control corporation in New York and then we had the actual Honeywell charts that were in this box, which still has a seal on it. So let's not uh, open this up, but I'm assuming that this is going to be very similar to this type here. Um, so let me put this chart back on here. So you know, you slide it in under the little, under the pens and, you know, then drop it in and then you take the, the little nut and screw it down. And, you know, we can put the, hmm, how's that pen? Oh, well, you know, I might be able to see if we can actually get some replacement pens for this. You know, I probably should actually take a, a look into what the hell it is before, um, like what's it actually going to, to measure, you know, and so get this in under those little things there doesn't appear to be any uh, 
input area on it either. You know, if we look in the back here, you know, I don't know how well that's going to come through, but you can see out of the back of the unit the drive motor in there, and then this is going to be controlling. Uh, you know, that's going to be controlling the pens and where they go, but I don't actually know what it's measuring. These might, you know, you know these might actually have been set um, at the factory to measure a particular thing, like temperature or something like that. Anyway, let me go take a quick check and see what the, what I can find from that uh, that part number. Uh, of course. So. If we look down, let me zoom that in, you'll see what it's actually designed to record. And there you can see it. The purple line is going to be recording the temperature from 0 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And the red line is going to be recording relative humidity from uh, 0 to 100%. And so you can drop this in here and just uh, let it go, plug it in with the pens and it will you know record the appropriate uh, items as needed so I'm uh, not going to plug those in I think I'm gonna maybe see if I can get a pen at some point and you know get these uh, these pens uh, replaced and uh, you know I might just simply Put, use it here in the house to capture some uh, temperature data like here in my lab and see uh, how my uh, lab goes uh, for a um, uh, for a week hmm we'll get back to that we might do a little bit of time-lapse video on it uh, possibly we'll see uh, if I can get my camera set up to do that all right let's uh, go to the next item okay so here we have our 7475A plotter. Now, this plotter didn't come with a, a little carousel here, so I have the carousel out of the um, out of the 7090A that I'm going to use. The uh, 7475A and the 7090A are actually the the same internals, just uh, added to a bigger unit. Now, interestingly, this came actually with the sealed. Um, uh, packet. So, you know, I've got all of the uh, uh, instruction manuals and everything uh, as expected. So, you know, let's uh, open that up. Go open up and take a look at the little pens here. And see what I've got. So I've got brown, yellow, red, 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 violet, black, green, aqua, blue and violet. Hmm. I wonder if these actually still work. There's actually a, a recommended order that you uh, put the pens in. Oh, this is actually... Here we go. Take a look at here. Take a look at that little sticker. Return this manual. So this is actually a rental plotter. So, you know, it says, please return this to... Uh, TRS uh, Rental Co. in Texas. I don't even know if this st they still exist, um, but it's just a, a simple copy of the uh, the menu. Oh, yeah. So let me zoom this back out. Technology Rentals and Service. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a quick look and see in the manual. There is a, supposed to be a, a, a particular order that you put the pens in. So let's go and see what that... Uh, not, it's a, not a particular order. You can put them in in any order that you, that you want. But they have a, a recommended um, order that you should put it in. Uh, so let's see if they list it in here. and their functions loading the pens of castle here we go ok 
okay they don't actually list it in this particular uh, manual all right well anyway we have we have uh, black green aqua one could say that blue and violet so that was this pack here so let's open this guy and we'll tip these here you can see what the, the little pens look like but see if yellow still has any uh, ink left in it let's grab a little piece of paper here nope those things have been I think it's sitting out for however long and clearly they don't have much ink in them oh yeah well that's still a bit of ink well, I wonder why yellow didn't then let's just try flicking it and see if it try the orange that doesn't look a lot like it anyway um, we can see that these let's try brown here yeah by the look of the fact that they're all basically the same color I'm guessing that you know there's some part of the volatile mixture is probably you know gone out of the you know for all of the pens it's sort of the same you know so this guy that I ordered here it was a brand new one they're still actually sold you can still get them um, but uh, yeah well that didn't come out uh, very good let's uh, take a look at the other bag and see what they come out as they're going to be basically the same color set you know and yeah you can see that they've dried out as well oh yeah so well, at least we know that the pens have dried out but actually have some that's the this is the the model of uh, pen that I bought uh, before what I also got with the unit is and let me take this little carousel this little carousel has a register on the bottom you can see it here and you drop it here into the, the hole and it'll register down and that's how the unit knows uh, what carous what uh, color it's actually picking there was a bunch of paper that was in uh, the carton as well and so this is um, paper specifically designed for plotters I believe so you know this uh, well who knows this is just textronics I can't imagine that they you know, make uh, that they're still even bothering to make paper um, it doesn't tell you what uh, weight the paper is this guy here though is by Hewlett Packard and it is you know specifically non-glossy uh, paper now the reason you might want to use this specific paper here uh, as a plot of paper is that as you know you saw uh, with the uh, chart recorders that the longer the pen spends on the paper it'll wick the uh, the ink out and so uh, the plot of paper has a different uh, weight to it and it's designed not to do have as much wicking uh, on the outside there so let's just get rid of that uh, sheet of paper and let's come in here and turn this on now and see uh, what happens uh, that's a pretty good sign you know we can see down over here you'll see a little uh, LED which is showing AA4 um, you need to tell the units whether they're running uh, ANSI or ISO paper sizes and you do that by setting um, the little uh, switch down the back here so 
you know, let me see if I can. I have my uh, wide angle lens in, you know, but uh, to give you this whole thing. But here you can see, you know, we have uh, the uh, items that will tell you whether it's going to be a US page um, or A4, A3, uh, and so on. And you can see that off the board. Right, this one is actually a uh, RS232 instead of a uh, GPIB uh, plotter. And so um, it's not as particularly interesting to me. And I suspect that uh, what I'll do is uh, get rid of this guy. Uh, or depending on the, you know, what they go for, I might just keep it. Because as I said, the guts of this unit here are the same as uh, the 7090. So let's uh, load a sheet of paper. And what you'll see when we load the sheet of paper here is you'll see these... Uh, uh, wheels here will grab the paper and the paper will move in and out. So let me load that paper. So I'm just going to grab a sheet here and stick this in and it should run against the guide. So let's drop that down and then when I drop this, okay, this unit doesn't, but they normally slide the paper in and back in and uh, um, try and register it. So you should be able to get a test pattern written by holding down P1 and P2 and turning the unit on. So let's see what happens there. There we go. Nice. Well, that's still working. Let me flip that uh, little thing out. You should be might be able to see that a little better. Let's. See if I can zoom in so you can see the, the sheet moving back and forward. So let's zoom out a little bit because it's gotten out of zoom. Because I only have five pens labeled in, it's trying to find what the, the right pen it's going to use to, you know, given that the colors don't uh, match. So. Anyway, let's let that run and see what happens and we get out of the end of it. It's the afternoon here in uh, Seattle, so I'm having a little bit of a uh, sangria style uh, drink. Okay, so let's uh, just zoom that back out a bit. Let's see if uh, we can get that so that you can see that. Let's zoom in. You know, here you can see the um, that it's all test pattern seems to have written correctly. So you know, without hooking it up to uh, a unit, it seems to be uh, pretty well. Now over here, you'll notice. So let me see if I can zoom with the wide angle lens right in. You'll see how that edge, you can see the bleed that occurs. And this is because this paper uh, is not really designed for, you know, felt tip pens being used on it. Uh, and so you're getting that, you know, wicking away of the felt tip. Hey, right, well, that's pretty cool. That means that this unit seems to be working. At some point, I'll hook it up to an RS32 device and we'll see how... Uh, that actually goes in terms of um, uh, talking to a, a computer. In fact, my, 50, my E5810A, uh, which is the LAN to GPIB adapter, has an RS232 interface in it. Um, I'm wondering if maybe I might be able to just plug that straight into this and then treat it as a, HP, a GPIB instrument. Hmm, something to think about. All right, let's go and look at the next unit. Okay, so here we are. This is the... Uh, uh, Hewlett Packard 7090A uh, measurement plotting system. Um, now, most commonly, this was used uh, in conjunction with some software that ran on a, a series 200, 300 uh, HP you know, 9000 machine. Um, 
but uh, it can also be used standalone. And so I have that same carousel, we'll just drop that in, you know, so that it uh, works out there. Now, the cool thing about this unit is this part of the unit over here. And so if we look in closely here, what you'll see is that it has three channels uh, in here. So it has its own internal memory and it has its own internal ADC. And I think the ADC is a, a 12 or 14 bit ADC uh, in the device. So I can feed up to, you know, what is it? Uh, 40 volt peak to peak, but um, uh, up to 200, uh, I think uh, 200 volts floating because each one of these uh, items, are, each one of these channels are a floating channel. And so I can control whether I want the guard uh, to be bound to uh, uh, low or not. And so uh, what you can do is you can set up measurements to occur with this unit and actually measure uh, direct in here on the, um, uh, these inputs uh, and store it locally and then plot it later. Or you can actually even use this as an acquisition front end for a GPIB based uh, system. So now that we have this, let's uh, turn this uh, on as well. Where's the, the switch? There it is. And you'll see 7090 coming up there. Hopefully that's enough to see. Okay. So let's load a sheet of paper. We'll push a sheet of paper in there. There we go. And then you can see as it moves it back and, and zeroes it correctly. Um, now, I think if I press left and right and shift, that will actually have it draw its uh, test pattern. There we go. Let's see if we zoom in a little bit. These things were back in the day the absolute duck's guts. These having this uh, plotter gear uh, was fantastic. You had this to do your um, rendering. You had um, the actual vector plotting terminals uh, to be able to look at things online. Um, this was uh, something that I actually really wanted out of the, the group, and that's how I ended up with a bunch of this other a plot of stuff. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, at least now we know it's working. So now let's load another piece of paper. Let's see if we can actually do a real measurement. Let me go set that up. Okay. Now, this is all completely uh, memory. Okay, so I select the range we're gonna have set at 10 volts here. Uh, we want offset to be zero range for two we want to be 10 volts as well because I'm doing five volts peak to peak an offset to be zero and the offset of three we, we don't care uh, the grid access divisions 25 that seems unnecessarily high so let's make it just 10 and then Y will make it 10 as well and total time let's do let's do five, half a second okay now it's going to be 500 so let me set my uh, frequency to 10 hertz and for channel 2 we'll set it for 20 hertz okay um, now I don't want any post and pre-trigger 
let's get down and have a look at the trigger level. Zero volts, okay. Trigger width. Oh, time and date. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay, so shift. Time and date. The year is 95, no. Nope. The year is 17. Okay. Month is July and the date is the sixth, the seventh, the sixth. Hang on. It's the seventh. Okay. So there we go. And so the time. Hmm. Time is 7.20, so, so 19, okay, okay, so now, I can select channels A and B, trigger external, and I'm going to do uh, fill buffer, and we'll see what happens. Okay, the buffer is filled. So, the plot control, let's do grid. Ah, okay. Clearly I should have selected a pen first. So I want my pen done in, say, five. Okay, so now let's do grid again. change my pen to say four. Alright, let's do plot the buffer and see what happens. Ah! Alright, now, I was wondering, oh, it's going to be doing zeros but uh, clearly what I forgot to do was actually turn on the outputs from each channel so let's go and fill the buffer so the buffers fill and let's go plot the buffer again least we got, um, you know, if we look um, down here, we'll see that at least we got some recording. So, alright, well, I'm going to go away and actually crack open the manual and refresh uh, uh, my knowledge of how to get that done, and then uh, we'll do another plot and see what uh, comes up. Okay, so I took a little look and I, the problem was twofold. One, I had the signal generator connected incorrectly, but two, uh, it doesn't do negative voltage, so you have to offset, um, uh, when you're doing the plot, you have to set the zero points uh, correctly, or you need to um, uh, set an offset. So let's go and do this again. Alright, so now what we want to do is I want to um, uh, set my range to 10 volts, yep, now my offset. Uh, I'm going to go and set that to 5 volts, as you can see there. 
range 2 is 10 volts and that offset I'm going to set to 5 volts as well so now we should get our signals printed sort of roughly in the middle of the screen so I'm going to select uh, uh, let me keep going down here so I don't need to set range 3 grid divisions let's only have uh, 10 grid divisions there and we'll do you know 15 there and we'll do half a second oh. and you can press this course button and it will take you down a little bit faster so you know if we go there okay so now we're ready for half a second I don't want to change any of the trigger and stuff so I'm going to come over here and with channel 2 selected so I get both channels versus time uh, let's go and uh, fill the buffer and you'll see the little light will come on when it says it's filled alright so now it's filled so now I can go and draw the grid so let's uh, select pen 4 and we'll draw our grid So there's a grid, so now let's go and plot the buffer. So the first thing it's going to do is plot channel A. Okay. So now that I've got that, what we can go do is actually go in and um, print. Uh, we can print some labels. So uh, what I want to do is let me position the cursor where I would like the label to be printed. Let's um, let's change that uh, to five. Okay, and so now I'm going to go print the time. So we'll press Shift uh, Time. And then we'll print the label. Shift Label. Okay, so let me open that up, and here if we zoom in, you'll see that we printed uh, our grid, we got our channel 1 sine wave, we got the channel 2 sync wave come in, you can see that it's uh, pretty nicely defined given that um, uh, with the ADC that's coming directly out of here, and you can see that we got some labels information about that. So overall, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that uh, uh, all of these, I think this thing is uh, working pretty well. Um, and so clearly, though, with some of the, the colors that I'm getting, I probably need to go get a different set of pens or, or something like that because they didn't quite come out exactly the colors that I was expecting. Anyway, um, black was pretty good and uh, mostly I think that uh, it's going to be great. So I look forward to... Uh, taking a deeper look at this and playing with some of the stuff that we can do here and then maybe seeing if we can automate some uh, uh, data capture and then write back to the the unit there's a bunch of stuff on the side over here that lets you actually integrate some BNC controls that lets you plug in a scope so that you can actually look at your measurements before you're ready to go okay that is the measurement I want and I'm going to go and trigger against it Anyway, I hope you found that interesting and uh, check in for the next part where we'll take a look at uh, a couple of the signal generators I've got. I right. hope you found this interesting and I'll catch you again later.